Hey guys, it's Jenny with Legacy, and I'm here with Josh, one of our amazing vocal coaches, and just wanted to give an update on your American Idol journey. Some of you know, some of you don't know, but Josh did audition for American Idol last year, last fall, and it's been a really fun, exciting process. It's been, been fun following him here at the studio. And so we just kind of wanted to have a conversation and talk about um, what that's been like. Um, you can give us some tips on what it's like to audition for a show like that, and then also kind of what has inspired you and what you've learned. So first off, welcome to the Thank couch. Thank you for having me on. Yes, at the studio. Um, tell us, first off, the update for American Idol. Where do things stand right now? Okay, so for right now, um, I'm not on the show, so okay. I made it to the, I made it through a, hand, a few rounds, about three or four um, auditions with um, executive producers of the show, um, but they, I think this was a different direction for the season, and um, so yeah, we're just kind of chilling now. Yeah. <laughs> Love it, cheers. <laughs> Well, I mean, I think it's important that we do this update now because American Idol starts in mid-February. Mm -hmm. And so I know people will be tuning in and people have been asking. I've been around when people have said, like, oh, when are you on the show? Like, when is it going to be airing? And yeah. so I don't think people understand fully all of the auditions that happen before the television show starts. Oh, no. People have a zero clue. Right. So it's not like you just went and had one audition and it was done. Mm -mm. Um like tell us a little bit about that journey because I feel like there was a good span of time that you were here rehearsing, working on things, and um, like there's so much to share. And I found it fascinating. I mean, for one, I'm I'm not a vocalist, but I um, I found it really interesting the whole process. So, yeah. can you tell us a little bit about first, even um, how you came to even be on the show or they found you, you know, to audition? So yeah, well, so. This is the second time that I've gone through this process. Um, both times uh, I had one of the casting producers find me on social media. Okay. So get, use your social media, it's a good, good resource. Um, but yeah, they had reached out through social media, through Instagram specifically. I guess my, um, some videos of mine had showed up on their like page or like for you page or whatever when you're scrolling sometimes. Um, and Instagram just puts stuff up. And so um, both times they reached out to me um, via email and Instagram and were like, hey, we think you would do great on the show. We love your voice. We love your sound. Like, if you're interested in, in auditioning, like, shoot us a message, give us a call, whatever. And uh, so um, literally that's what I did. Well, the first time it was funny because I was with uh, my one of my roommates and I got this random email and I was yeah. like, what is this? Like, how would you know it's real? Because well, I would think like you get an email like that and you're like, that's spam. Oh no, yeah. I, I think it was me and my roommate, Trey. And I remember I was like, I was like, whoa, whoa pause what we're watching. Because I think we're watching some stupid show. And uh, I was like reading it and I was like, and I kind of shared it with Trey. I was just like kind of like bug eyed and freaking out. And he loves to do like research and like know things. So he was like, hold please and so he went and like searched up the names and like just as much as he could to figure it out if, if it was like legitimate and right. um, both times turned out to be legitimate and uh, and then that began the kind of process before the audition which was um, having a meeting with the, the casting producers um, and going over songs going over you know choices for different keys and kind of them explaining and kind of setting me up for success in regards to what to expect because right. both these auditions were um, on Skype and Zoom um, so pre-COVID and during COVID wow yeah that's I remember when you first like said you got a message mm -hmm. and I again I was also like okay um <laughs> Anyone can say they're with American yeah, Idol. This is probably and some so, like warranty scam. Right. So. Yeah. I think we all were a little bit, huh? I mean, not that you weren't talented because we totally knew you could do it, but it was more of like, how do they find you? So I think that's fascinating because a lot of our students and um, friends do have social media and so they put their stuff out there. And so that's a legitimate way to be found mm -hmm. or heard. And so it wasn't that you went and stood in line. Like back in the day when, 
Well, so American Idol started way back when I was I, in I watched the first 20s. season. Yeah. Kelly Clarkson, Justin Guarini. Yes. Like, and I remember they would, day. like, stand in lines outside convention centers and all of that. So that's not necessarily the only way no. to be found No, for I mean, show. especially now, they have these, like, it's like these buses that'll show up in random parts of, like, different states and stuff like that. And they'll post on their social media, like, hey, we in these states at this location. Um, so you have that um, as well as online. I mean, a lot of people, especially people with like nine to five jobs, right. um, can't necessarily make those auditions or ask off if like, they find out last minute. So yeah. um, then you have the online auditions and stuff like that. Um, for me, um, I had the, whenever I got found, my auditions were like private auditions with the executive producers, okay. like more than just one. And it was like skipping a few steps. Okay, so let's do a little backstory on this. Mm -hmm. The audition process. <laughs> yes. Right, so that's, that's a whole different beast in terms of like, yes. how do you prepare? How do you know what your song choices are gonna be? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and how do you prepare for that? Because you hear all the time, like when you watch the show as a viewer, they'll be like, you could have picked a better song or that didn't mm -hmm. fit your voice and so, were there people you consulted about that? Or how did you decide um, what key you're going to be in or what worked? I mean, what, how did that go for you? So for me, it was, this was kind of the, the part that really was, um, I, I don't want to say surprising, but I, I was caught off guard a little bit. So um, it was mainly this, this recent time, this last fall, um, I had a Zoom meeting with the casting producer that found me. And he was like, hey, like, I want to, like, I want to actually, like, help you. Like, my vision and my, like, my heart is for people to see their dreams come true, yeah. but specifically, like, your generation. And I was like, that's awesome. Yeah. And so he actually, like, was like, what song ideas do you have? Because before, like, an email before he said, bring these song ideas, um, like, know them, like, bring them to the, like, our meeting on Zoom. And I said, okay. So I would, like, run through, like, at least a minute, like to minute 15 seconds um, of like the song. And um, he would give me his feedback and yeah. tell me like, hey, like this is actually a cool song. Can let's try, can you try to half step up? Um, and then, um, and then also I had like, you know, I had help from, um, you know, my friend Morgan, um, who's just great with song choices and she was a big help um, just with one of the many rounds that I had this, mm -hmm. this, this. Yeah, I think this, there were a lot show. of people I remember like Eli stopping by, gave me some input. Your mm -hmm. friend Alex came. Yeah, um, Alex came and played like unintentionally because of like multiple different things, but he ended up being around to actually play piano for yeah. my audition, which was a huge help because it gave me permission to be able to just focus on like right. the performance and the vocal side instead of also having to think about playing guitar and right. um, yeah, it just the support and the uh, like the preparation process was surprisingly just surprising because yeah. I didn't I didn't I knew what to expect this time around, but it just it still looked different. Yeah. So yeah, I think that's really cool because. Um, one thing that I, I really enjoy about this studio is that we are active musicians. Yeah. And so we, um, we do talk the talk, but we walk the walk too. So, and you know, we are out there pursuing our dreams and goals. And I know that's my heart for everyone that works here is that I want to see their dreams come true. So it's, it was really fun to be able to kind of come up when I know you were going to be rehearsing or you guys were going to, you know, you were going to be talking to the producer and kind of in the background just watching it all unfold because I think there's just a lot of stuff that we don't know is actually happening and the feedback you're getting right then, lifetime yeah. feedback, even I, I feel like I, there was a time where you were singing one thing and then he said, hey, I don't know about that song choice. Let's do it again next week. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't like this was just a one time audition and it was done. I felt like there was several weeks of following up and meeting with more producers and he'd bring in other people. And you kind of had that one producer who was totally like 
you know, pushing for you and cheering you on and kind of selling you to the other people and bringing them in. And so that was kind of cool because I felt like we were doing the same in the background yeah. watching you. Yeah, it was, I think one of the things that he, that he said to me in one of the many meetings I had with him just because he, like, I don't know, I just, I've never experienced that kind of support from like someone who does not know me, does right. not know necessarily my story to its fullness and kind of understand how I got to where I'm at, you know? And so to have that support and have him like seriously asking me questions like, why did you use a song? Like, yeah. what about this key? Like he would kind of sing through it too. And like, I don't know, it was just interesting, but you know, on top of that support, there was something he said that really set me up for, like to go into, to, into this audition just with a sense of like peace. And it was, he literally said, when you get in there, it's gonna be a bunch of like producers sitting at their home, like with an American Idol like like back screen or whatever. Right. First of all, he said, We're a bunch of nerds and losers. Like <laughs> so don't like They kinda of put you at ease a yeah, little bit. Yeah, he's like, yeah. like the, we literally like you're don't even worry about it. We're just a bunch of losers. Excuse me. <clears throat> And like just sitting at home, like yeah. we're just trying to create a show and trying to find the talent that can create a great show. Yeah. Um, and for some reason that set me at ease. I think it was just because it, it broke that kind of like that weird belief in my head of like, oh, they're like these big, big people like looking at them like they're on like this pedestal. When in reality, it's just it's people trying to make a, like an experience for people to enjoy. Yeah. Um, and. Because were you nervous? I mean, you've been auditioning for a long time. I mean, you're 26 and yes. you've done lots of auditions. So like even when I think about the students we work with and they're auditioning for their high school musical or whatever, or even just recital performances, yeah. like nerves and being nervous is a part of it, yeah. right? So do you choose to like embrace it or you know, do you give up, you know, I think that's kind of a, a great thing that we're trying to teach our students is like, you're going to be nervous, right? Oh, yes. Yeah. And you have to set them up for that. I think for me, okay. it was, I was definitely nervous and the people around me saw that in like the waiting stages, yeah. you know, and uh, I won't say I was the most like calm person. <laughs> you were so much more relaxed. When it came down to it. I got time. I, I'm nervous, but it's like, I was nervous, but it's like, you got to do what you got to do. And <laughs> this is my fourth audition. <laughs> so I'm, I'm done. <laughs> when it came to the actual auditions and the prep, I think because I was set, so, set up so well by the casting producer that found me this year and just him verbalizing like the specific reasons why he's, like believes in me and believed in me and that, and especially in that kind of just that whole process that just kind of set me at ease and just made me realize you know what like I have nothing to prove this is this isn't I can't look at this as an audition I just have to look at this as another chance to perform right um because if that's what I love to do then the pressure's off right um and so yeah it was just the whole I don't know just the, it, all of that support and just even like the mental preparation that he helped me kind of work through was just the icing on the cake that really kept me calm. And then after, after my audition was done, done after, after I, I said, said bye, bye, thank you, <laughs> then I was like, because <gasps> I was like, ew, gross emotions. Yeah. I need wine. <laughs> well, it's stressful. I mean, but I think it's important to show that like you push through being scared and you just do it. Yeah. And so, versus just freaking out and not doing it. Mm -hmm. So otherwise you have more regret if you just don't do it. So just going for it, yeah. I think is amazing. Yeah, I mean, the only person that can keep you from pursuing something truly is yourself. Right. So sometimes you have to give yourself the permission to go for it, but also give yourself the permission to actually want it. Because the first time I got found and went through the process, I didn't give myself that grace and permission to want it yes. because I thought this is too good to be true or you know, whatever, what ifs, all those things. Try, but you tell me every time. Just keep breathing, 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 breathing. It's like you don't care at all. Or maybe it's your ego. 
But just your foolish pride It's like I'm not on your mind But this time around I was like, you know what? I'm gonna give myself that permission to want this, to go after this and then with that extra support that like came as I kept giving myself the permission, I mean, it, it just became worthwhile and something that I could genuinely enjoy, learn from, um, and grow from. Right. And that's, for me, that's all I could ask for. I think that's a better outcome than making the show because this is something that I, I'm gonna have to go through is getting a lot of no's. You will get a lot of no's, <laughs> so many, but, you got to think about, there's only one American Idol. Right. So think about all of the people that are getting those. Yeah. It's like, just a matter of when you get your no. Yeah. And yeah. so we're in the journey. For me, having no. that, like, there's a strong chance I will get a no. That's okay. Yeah. Because I had the encouragement and the people around me that were reminding me who I am, that my identity isn't in this show or this competition. Right. But in reality, it's in the fact that I've been gifted with this gift of music to share with people, but also be able to share the things I've learned with the students that I get to teach every yeah. day. Yeah, that's cool. Um, let's talk about in the actual process. So when you are talking with producers, because I think these are some good tips in terms of when you um, audition and mm -hmm. you have to make song changes or change keys and they give you that um, live time feedback and you're making changes. But even in the process, e even in interviews and things we've learned growing up that it's always good to come prepared with certain things. Maybe are there questions that the judges asked you that you wish you kind of knew ahead of time you prepared for? And also were there questions and things you should also turn around and ask the judges? Like what makes a good solid audition other than obviously the singing? But there's got to be some good communication in there. So what are some questions you maybe had for them or they had for you? I think the first thing for me was don't be afraid to ask questions because there is going to be the constant change. I mean, I went through three or four auditions this round um, just with these, like, casting producers, like the top two casting producers and then, like, executive producers. Mm -hmm. And I changed songs, I think... I want to say maybe like four or five times. Okay. And that's just for the few auditions I had, but like they wanted me to keep changing them because like maybe they'd say in this audition, this one felt a little too karaoke or um, this one didn't fit your voice well or I just didn't like the vibe of it, you know? Yeah. Um, so it's just the constant change. I think for me, I had to think about is like there's constant change. And if you, you can't allow that to actually overwhelm you that you have to go with the flow. You have to keep going with that. And did they ask you anything that surprised you? Um, yes and no. Yeah. <laughs> I think what surprised me the most was... Um, Some like the backstory, you well, know, yeah. that kind of thing. Like, tell us more about you. Well, and that and... was the thing is I think for this producer that found me, he was like, he wanted to just know me just to know me, you yeah. know? Um, and for me and my personality type, that's like a... <laughs> love me. Um, and uh, yeah, so... I think I was surprised just how genuine that conversation was, but then um, kind of sharing some of my story, I shared a lot about my adoption story mm -hmm. um, and the reasons why like I'm doing what I'm doing. It's because I get to honor my family, but also it's like I was born into a family that has a gift for like bringing hope to people and like bringing a smile to their face. And like mm -hmm. for me, that's music. Had the dream come true of getting to finally meet my birth family, specifically my grandma, my grand aunt, and my birth brother and my uncle. Um, sadly, about 10 years ago, my birth mother passed away, so I didn't get to meet her. But um, just getting to know them, I feel like I've gotten to meet her in a different way. And um, it, it, it's like a dream come true, but it, it turned out a little different. But it's given me a perspective of understanding that a dreams can come true. It may look different, but if you carry that, that, that mindset of positivity of hope, you know, anything can, anything can happen, so. I don't know, I just, I think the question that, that had followed that for me was like the why, like why do I, why is it about the story? And he was like, simple answer, this isn't just about like talent. Right. This is a reality TV show. Yeah. And so like you want to. They're looking for the full package. Yeah, and they, yeah. cause you wanna, you wanna get people to like you before you sing. Right. You wanna gain their empathy and sympathy um, before you, do anything with music right um because that's what catches their attention there yeah. may, there's maybe that 
that part of them can relate to your right. story. Right, that's how we connect. And then yeah. whenever you sing, it just, it changes how they receive it. Right. And I think, I mean, that was a huge thing as well that kind of surprised me. And then um, I think the, any questions I asked them were just in regards to like, so uh, when, like, what are the times that you have open <laughs> yeah. and like, also not being afraid to like, if you don't, don't hear back from them, like the day they say they'll, like, they'll call you or message right. you, don't be afraid to reach out. Yeah, just out. all the logistical yeah. of an audition. Yeah, it's Hollywood. They literally don't know time. <laughs> well, I think that's always good is a good follow-up, you know, yeah. um, and um, that's, that's just a good adulting, right? Like, hey, thank you for um, giving me the time today. You know, yeah. when can I, when will I expect to hear from you or when can I follow up with you, things like that. Those yeah. are all important things in an audition. So let's talk about what you've learned. Because I will say even the first year you auditioned for American Idol in 2019 and then in 2020, I think even how, as we say, everyone gets a no eventually, except for the one winner. Um, I think how you kind of receive that rejection or how you take that and then yeah. how you process it and deal with it is really important because that it's gonna happen all the time in our industry. Mm -hmm. um, and so, and it's really difficult because we take it very personal, especially in voice. I mean, it is you. It's a part of your it's being. It's part it's of you, you know, intimate. like even in like my piano playing, if someone doesn't like it, I, I take it personally because it's, it's a part of me and who I am. So I, I've, I've seen a tremendous amount of growth in terms of how you received the news in 2019. Thank you. And how you received it this year. And so, and even having to get the follow-up questions of, oh, so when are you gonna be on TV? And you've kind of been like, I'll let you know. Um, <laughs> I'll let you know when I know. I'll let you know when I know. Cheers, yeah, because there was Hollywood. a lot of waiting. Um, so kind of like what, I guess, what have you learned from all of this? And Oh, that's a great question. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of things I've learned. Um, one of them being don't get wrapped up in this being the one chance that you have. Right. Um, I think in 2019, I, I was on a writing retreat and I got the news and I was like, what was me? And like, I'm in this group and I just like, like just, I gave up and yeah. I closed down, but you know, and I shut down, but the big thing I realized is I, one, I didn't give myself the permission to want it. Yeah. Two, um, I took it personally right. when in reality, it's a reality show. <laughs> it's yes. like, so it's not personal. It's just like, mm, maybe next year. Right. Like, these people, like, it's fine. And then this year, I think I was able to, again, I think it was that support, yeah. the legitimacy and what I was given so I can understand the full process. That helped me be able to receive that in a way where it's like, hey, this isn't a no, like you're not good. This is a, hey, you just don't fit what we want for this season. Right. Um, another thing I learned is there is a list of songs that you should never use for your auditions. <laughs> don't sing Valerie by Amy Winehouse. Oh. Don't do it. Okay. Valerie is one, um, Michael Buble, try to avoid like feeling good. Um, any hits that are like, the big ones right now like if whatever is the most the biggest like newest hit try to avoid it most okay. people will do it yeah um i remember there was a year long like years ago in american idol when everybody apparently auditioned for with the song like uh lady marmalade oh <laughs> and i think i think it was actually kelly clarkson that uh season she was just like because they had she had one song and they're like could you sing another and she's like yeah sure and she's like just don't sing lady marmalade because everybody else is doing it and then like she started singing something else. So be very particular and ask the questions of like, is this song like blacklisted like a no, no, no go? Right. Because the moment that, if you choose that song and you sing it and it's on that list, they're gonna zone out, not because of your, your a lack of talent, but because they've you heard this song yeah. a million times and it's old and it's dry. Right. Um, also that they do it, allow you to do originals. It's a risk. Um, but if you are able to go through the process, kind of like what I went through, they'll tell you like, the song's good or eh, maybe keep working on it. Or they'll be like, hey, like cool song. I just don't think it fits what we're wanting. Right. So like, what do you, what else do you have? Right. So it's like, when I say song choices, like the biggest thing, like that's the biggest thing. Um, and then I think I just, I think I also learned just 
if you have the opportunity come like come to you, take it. Yeah. I mean, I think you said earlier, it's like those what ifs. Like, yeah. Why would you want to live life with a bunch of what ifs when you can just do it? Right. And eventually say, hey, that happened. Like, yeah. There, in my opinion, when you do that, you're limiting your chance to like see yourself soar. Right. And I and I tell my students all the time, it's like, hey, like, if you don't take the risk. All you'll have is a what if. So like take it. Yeah. Even if you like get it wrong or like your voice yeah. cracks, like the fact you went for it yeah. means that you tried it once, but you can get up and do it again. Right. Until you get it. Until you feel like you can land firmly on the ground and nail it. Right. So it's just I don't know. I can tell genuinely say American Idol was a an encouraging experience. Yeah, I don't think a lot of people would word it that way, but for me it was because, again, I didn't think I was good enough. I had those ideas, those really negative thoughts, and being able to have people at that level of, like, being a producer on a show, like, say, like, no, I actually believe in you. Yeah. I'm affirming you. They still follow me on Instagram. <laughs> um, like, it's, like, it's affirming and it's encouraging because it's, like, no, that means, like, I... They thought I would be good enough for a show that has been done since, like, what, 2001? Yeah. Like, come on. Like, that's such a compliment. Right. And for me, that was also like, no, I can do this. Like, I am capable of this. Yeah. And if I am, and I'm willing to take this risk, then so are the people that I'm, like, pouring into and that I get to teach every day. Yeah. Um, it's, a, it's a ripple effect. And I, I want my students to be able to experience and learn from the things that I've done yeah. and the mistakes that I have made. Yeah. Um, and American Idol is one of those opportunities that changed my life in a way that it wasn't this big thing, but it was. It helped me mature and grow as a musician. It helped yeah. me learn a lot about my sound and when I need to speak up and actually go for something when I want it instead of just sitting on the sidelines and saying, I don't think I'm good enough. Right. It's like, no, just do it. Just do it. Yeah. Just do it. Just do it. Yeah. Well, I am very proud of you. And it's it's so fun to watch you chase your dreams just like the other people I work with. And, um, you know, if you get the chance, I hope you do it again, whether it's American Idol or another show or another opportunity, because I feel like we all learn from it, not just you. And we're mm -hmm. all cheering you on. Just like I know when you... Um, see the rest of our team, you know, going for it and doing things, you're cheering them on. So um, I think that's a great thing. You know, we champion each other. And um, I just really look forward to seeing what's up next for you. Yeah. And um, I'm excited to see where what you've learned, how we're going to help our students take their next steps mm -hmm. in auditioning, preparing for them, preparing for rejection, um, and just putting themselves out there. Yeah. And so anyway, I'm just really proud of you, Josh. Mm, thank you. Cheers. Cheers. Alright, is that it? Thanks. <laughs> is that it? Yeah. I guess so. Yeah. Do you think we covered enough? Yeah, I have, this is 30 minutes. Oh, when Jesus I'm sorry. Saved.